salt wave hits the beach. It's a landing on an enemy-held island. Most of the boats get their men and equipment through the surf and then return to join other invasion waves. But some of them don't make out so well. Some of them are broached and the surf swamps out their motors. They might be a complete loss. But correct salvage operations can put them back into the fight again. This is the Jahimi. The Jahimi is a boat carrier a dry dock that goes to the boat. If the boat is seaworthy, the Jahimi will pick it up and put it back into the surf. If not, it will bring the boat in for repair. There are six men in a Jahimi crew, two chainfall operators on this hoist. Two more on the forward hoist. The bosun's mate who has complete charge of the Jahimi and all boats carried. And the Caterpillar operator, who must be able to maneuver the Jahimi into position quickly, accurately, even at night without light. Also riding on the rail are the four men of the boat crew. In addition to its salvage operations, the Jahimi is extremely useful at amphibious bases for training landing boat crews. At a large training activity, every day, hundreds of men are learning amphibious warfare by actually operating these boats in practice landings. It's the start of a day's drill, and it's the Jahimi that puts the trainees and their boats into the surf. Then at the end of the day, it brings them ashore. The boats are gassed up, repaired, and made ready for the next day's drill, over and over till all hands are ready for the real thing. Now that we have seen what the Jahimi is and what it does, let's see how it gets to the scene of action. Here we are at the pier where a transport is being loaded for an amphibious operation. The Jahimi may be shipped dismantled and assembled at the dock, or it may arrive completely assembled, ready for operation. You've probably been wondering about the rows of oil drums fastened to the top of the Jahimi. They contain nothing but air, and that's the reason the Jahimi floats, as you'll see just as soon as we get to the combat area. The tractor is unhitched. The transport boom is swung into position, and the hook lowered. To lift the Jahimi, there are four cables fastened to eye bolts at the corners of the frame. These cables are slipped over the hook, and the Jahimi is hoisted aboard. Notice the heavy fenders installed on the frame to protect the boats that will be carried by the Jahimi. It takes a large transport to provide space to carry it. And so, with other invasion equipment, the Jahimi goes aboard, ready to get underway for the transport area where the invasion forces are assembled for the landing. The Jahimi may be one of the first pieces of equipment to come off the transport, although it will probably not go ashore until the beachhead is established. In the meantime, it must be floated out of the way of other operations. 
To tow it to such a position astern of the transport, a salvage boat comes alongside. A heaving line is thrown from the deck of the transport, and the salvage boat crew pulls aboard a 15-fathom, 5-inch line, which has been made fast to the tongue of the Jahimi. The other end of the line is thrown over the boat's king post. In the meantime, the Jahimi has been lowered into the water, and we're ready to tow it away. Now you see why the Jahimi floats. There are 32 of those 55-gallon drums which provide enough buoyancy to float the five-ton Jahimi. The man who went over the side with the Jahimi to unfasten the crane hook is put aboard with the rest of the Jahimi crew. Now the Jahimi is well out of the way, about a hundred yards astern. A heaving line is thrown to the salvage boat and a tow line from the transport is taken aboard. This line is then carried to the stern where it is shackled to the Jahimi line, which of course is still secured to the king post. When both lines are shackled together, they are thrown overboard. The salvage boat pulls away and the Jahimi is left floating astern of the transport, ready to be taken ashore the moment it's needed. During the landing of some of the heavy equipment, an LCM hits the beach and a caterpillar tractor which is used with the Jahimi is put ashore. Now the landing operation has reached the point at which the Jahimi is to be taken ashore. The salvage boat returns from pulling broached boats off the beach, and the crew picks up the line at the point where it is shackled. The Jahimi line is thrown over the king post, and the shackle is removed. The line is thrown overboard and hauled in by the transport. Then in place of this, the salvage boat's own tow line is shackled to the Jahimi line. Now we're ready to move away from the Jahimi, paying out line as we go till they're about 40 fathoms out to the Jahimi. This is a good towing distance, and so the line is made fast and the Jahimi towed ashore. Making about five knots, it may be towed many miles. Now, as the boat nears the surf line, here's an important thing to remember. Don't try to tow the Jahimi through the surf. The boat is stopped and backed down, taking in line until there are only about 20 fathoms out to the Jahimi. Then it is made fast again. This short stay will permit us to get the Jahimi much closer to the surf. There's the spot we want to hit on the beach. The caterpillar is standing by. Beaching. Of course, it's impossible to get top speed with such a heavy tow, so the line is thrown off the king post, and we're ready for the run to the beach. It's full speed through the surf, paying out line as we go. 
The moment the boat hits the beach, the Jahimi crew is over the side with the bitter end of the tow line. They carry it to the waiting caterpillar. Put it through the drawbar and pull in the slack. It's made taut against the drawbar. And while this is happening, the salvage boat retracts and gets out of the way. Here's an effective hitch that can be made quickly and loosened quickly. Now we're ready to pull the Jahimi onto the beach. It will be necessary to make several runs depending upon the depth of the beach. When the tractor has gone as far inshore as the beach will allow, the line is unhitched. And the caterpillar moves back toward the water. The line is kept taut by the crewman pulling it through the drawbar until the cat is in position to take another pull. There's no time lost in making another hitch, and the tractor is ready for another run toward the beach. The Jahimi is in close enough now to be reached by the tractor without a line. The line is thrown aside, and when the drawbar is in position, the pin is inserted. Now we're ready to take it out of the water. The chain fall operators unlash the load and hand chain. So the Jahimi, Caterpillar, and crew are ready to go after their first boat stranded on the beach. Here it is. It's swamped, and the motor is conked out. In addition to the water that has come over the side, the hull has been damaged. Even though the boat fills with sand and water, the crew stays with it. To pick up a stranded boat, the caterpillar operator must be able to maneuver squarely over the boat, even at night without lights. The lifting hook is suspended by a loop around the strong back so that it won't swing free and strike the men who might be in the boat. The hook is put in the boat's lifting eye. All four chain fall operators turn to, and the boat is lifted off the bottom. When a boat is filled with sand and water, it must be lifted and moved slowly. The extra weight may cause the chain falls to carry away or overtax the capacity of the Jahimi. Then, as soon as possible, the bilge plug should be removed to get rid of some of this weight. Don't forget to replace the bilge plugs before the boat goes back into the water. When the boat is high enough, the bosun gives the word, the chain fall operator stop pulling, and one blast of his whistle tells the caterpillar operator to pull toward the beach. From here, we'll take the wrecked boat to whatever repair facilities have been set up. Boat blocks are set into position. 
The chain fall men lower away. And the boat settles on the blocks. The lifting hooks are removed. And the Jahimi moves away. The boat is ready for the ship fitters and mechanics. Now let's take a look at the spare parts and repair equipment of the Jahimi. This equipment is carried in a box bolted to the top of the strong bank. There are two eight-ton jacks. Two spare load chains for the chain fall hoist. And a grease gun for lubricating the Jahimi. The Jahimi requires very little maintenance. If it's in constant use, the wheel should be removed and inspected once a month. Here it is important to look for wear in the roller bearings and to see that grease is getting in where it belongs. Lubrication is very simple. There are only 14 points to be lubricated, but they need attention every week. Here is one of the 14 points, the stinger which extends inside the tongue. Now to work on the chain falls, back the Jahimi over any available structure. Both the hand chain and the load chain should be inspected frequently for wear in the links. If the chain is so badly worn that it might break under a heavy load, it should be replaced with one of the spare chains. This boat, the Jahimi salvaged, has been repaired, and the Jahimi can quickly put it back into service. The boat crew is aboard. The Jahimi moves into position. The chain fall operators jump from the standing rail into the boat, ready to pick it up. The lifting hooks go into position. Chain falls go into action. The boat is lifted off the block. A blast of the bosun's whistle, and the boat is on its way, down the beach, and out to the surf. Again, the chain fall operators turn to. The boat is lowered, and another LCVP is ready for action. At this very moment, many more of these landing boats are being built thousands of miles away at a tremendous cost. But these are right here where they are needed now, thanks to the Jahimi, the dry dock that walks and swims.